Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace. This is Sumaya Khalifa with the Islamic Speakers. We are of Atlanta welcoming you to another day of inspirations during Ramadan. We are so honored and blessed to have our own beloved Sheikh, scholar, teacher, author, uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Yahya al Nanawi. Uh, Sheikh, we are so delighted and again honored and privileged to have you. And we look forward to hearing from you this morning. Sakallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. rahman rahim and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Thank you so much, uh, ISB Atlanta, for all you do, and Sumaya and the team. Um, we're in Ramadan, so Ramadan Mubarak Kareem uh, to everybody. And uh, I hope and pray that uh, your Ramadan is going well, spiritually uplifting, and you're maximizing the opportunity uh, that we have in Ramadan. Um, I'm going to just start with a verse in the Quran and we'll go from there. Where Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam wa kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe fasting was prescribed, was prescribed or is prescribed upon you just like it was prescribed upon nations before you la'allakum tattaqoon so that you may attain taqwa and uh, taqwa let's just now for uh, ease uh, call it uh, conscientiousness of god god conscientiousness and uh, it seems that this ayah is telling us really what the fasting is all about and uh, what what the objective of fasting is because uh, the the verse is telling us that fasting is not just for fasting fasting is for a reason and that reason is fasting was prescribed on you so that you may attain it so it seems that it's making it makes our job easier to attain it and that's why the creator uh, uh, asked us to fast um, and taqwa here, so this tahqiq taqwa or the God conscientiousness is one of the things that are easy and yet difficult at the same time because it slips from your hands just like almost water slips from between your fingers if you're not conscious about it. And that's the whole point of wake, awaken, awakening or sort of waking up to that spirituality within you. And that's why what's attributed to Umar uh, ibn Abdul Aziz, uh, the uh, pious Umayyad Caliph, rahimahullah, having said, لَيْسَتِ التَّقْوَى قِيَامَ اللَّيْلِ وَصِيَامَ النَّهَارِ وَالتَّخْلِيطَ فِي مَا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ Taqwa is not uh, uh, praying at night and fasting during the day and then doing lots of crazy things in between. Uh, that's not what it is. But taqwa is that consistency, basically, is what he's trying to say. Uh, uh, from the, the siyam that brings you to be much more spiritual so that you are uh, awakened, that you realize that uh, the creator of all is with you. You're never alone. That uh, it makes you realize that uh, the creator sees you, hears you, with you. It also lessens your uh, 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 being busy with with everything that we do during the day, uh, because oftentimes, when even when we sleep to th these days, we sleep out of exhaustion. Uh, it gives you time for reflection. It allows you to reflect. Less busier, lighter stomach, uh, uh, busy, less busy with lots of different things, and it helps collect you entirely on the presence of Allah, the Creator of all. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, uh, and the whole point here of Siyam is to allow us to be refined during Ramadan. And that's why uh, you see the prophetic hadith uh, telling us in many ways, you did not fast if your uh, limbs did not fast. What, would that, what that means is this, uh, fasting is not defined really by just abstaining from food and drinks from Fajr till sunset. No, because fasting is not really fasting if one has, if one's tongue has not fasted from 
uh, gossiping and mentioning people in a negative way, regardless whether he likes them or he doesn't like them, especially if he doesn't like them, obviously, because you're supposed to be good to those who are good to you, right? هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَى الْإِحْسَانِ But Ihsan is talking about uh, the person when he does something to those who he doesn't like. Well, that's not supposed to be the way, right? If you're good to those who are good to you, then what good are you? And uh, 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 he, uh, someone, uh, he or she did not fast Ramadan if uh, they're allowing their eyes to still chase the imperfections and the flaws uh, of people and, and look at things that they're not supposed to be looking at. That's not fasting. Uh, a person has not fasted if their earring uh, are still listening to that which is not good, which is evil, uh, 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 or calling for evil. Uh, one has not fasted if uh, one has not uh, abstained from doing injustice to other people, from treating people unjustly. Uh, one has not fasted if one is deceiving or cheating people or lying to people. Uh, one has not fasted if one is not standing up with the truth with people, etc., 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 right? And, and all this is collected in the hadith that Ahmad narrated in his Musnad, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is alleged to have said, رُبَّ صَائِمًا حَظُّهُ مِنْ صِيَامِهِ الْجُوعُ وَالْعَطَشِ وَرُبَّ قَائِمًا حَظُّهُ مِنْ قِيَامِهِ السَّهَرِ and that means this prophetic hadith says uh, there will be people who fast, uh, yani, uh, but what they take from their fasting is starvation and thirst. And there will be people in Ramadan who also pray at night. And what, they're, what they take from their prayer at night is just spending the night up. And the reason the Prophet وسلم, is telling us something like this is because these people uh, they Allah forgive us all we all fall into that so I'm not saying those people as I am not part of may Allah Ta'ala forgive us all but we have then been heedless from the wisdom of fasting and people think some people think that the objective of fasting is not eating and not drinking but the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of torturing you by making you see food and not eat or by making you see water and not drink. This is not the objective, but the objective and tasmun nafs wa tazku, the objective that the nafs uh, becomes now more spiritual and it starts elevating itself in the ladder of spirituality, becomes more transparent with the creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it becomes more transparent with the creation as well. It now becomes much more spiritual, much more illuminated, and much more educated. That's the whole point. The point is not just food and drinks. And that's to that uh, effect, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the hadith uh, that Al-Bukhari narrated in his Sahih, where he says, مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً those who don't abstain from saying lies and uh, providing false false testimony and whatever that false testimony is it could be a false testimony it doesn't mean a testimony before court but just false testimony then Allah the Prophet Sallallahu tells us Allah has no need of their uh, abstain, abstaining from food and drinks that's not the point. They've missed the point. They've missed the understanding of what fasting is all about. And that's why it's important that in this Ramadan to realize that Ramadan is just a month, is not just a month that is announced by the crescent uh, coming to conjunction and then the new crescent and then Al Urjun Al Qadim leaves and then the new crescent comes. And the month just goes and comes without any actual spiritual transformation to us. Ramadan is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah azza wa jal is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, the all-merciful, the all-loving al-Wadud. 
and gifts from the all loving and the all merciful uh, are definitely contain a lot are definitely definitely have lots of love and lots of mercy and it's no coincidence i don't think obviously you all know that for from a perspective of faith uh, there are no coincidences it's all by his decree meaning now he, uh, he enabled people to do right and wrong but nothing happens against his ultimate wisdom and will subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why i don't think that ramadan has come uh, as a coincidence in this time where humanity is suffering suffering from the corona pandemic lots of people are in pain and suffering uh, uh suffering from uh, 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 the uh, unchecked arrogance of human being, uh, ignorance of human beings, uh, unchecked arrogance of human beings. Like I said, uh, it's not a coincidence that Ramadan comes in this time, that time of difficulty and calamity to humanity, uh, right in the midst of it. And it's it's not a coincidence. It is actually a sign, inshallah, of mercy to come, a sign of ease to come a sign of healing to come and we ought to use it as as such we ought to take this opportunity of ramadan to implore uh, and to bleed to the creator of all to show whole, uh, the whole humanity uh, mercy in this month and to alleviate the suffering of all and to bring us to the spirituality uh, level that is sought by people of faith Ramadan is a sun, that a spiritual sun, let's say, that uh, shines on life. And through this shining on life, uh, the hearts of those who believe are rekindled, rekindled with light and light that illuminates them, that gives them a new direction, that, that gives them a new beginning, and that allows them to be closer to the one who they will always be close to, close to anyway after this life. Not equal those who simply abstain from food and drinks and, and those who realize what the objective of abstaining from food and drinks is, uh, 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 are. Uh, and that's why few things in this month that I always say we ought to do. Number one is obviously dua prayers. We ought to pray. This is a month where we, where we need to pray and pray with our heart, not with our tongues, always. And I mean, I'm not saying please do not pray with your tongues. Please do pray with your tongues. But please do not just sever the connection between the prayers of the heart and the prayers of the tongue. They need to be synchronized. And what I'm saying is that your prayers need to come from your heart and then allow the tongue to utter them. Allow the tongue to exactly pronounce that which you have already said in your heart or that which you are saying in your heart. If you don't synchronize your dua, your dua become lip service. The whole point of dua is a state of presence with Allah, being in the present with the all-loving creator of all. That's the whole point. The dua is a matter of the heart. It's a hal. It's not just a maqal. It's a spiritual state that collects you entirely on the creator's presence rather than sentences that you memorized and regurgitate. That's not the point. And therefore, if, you, if your heart is present and it's synchronized, with your tongue and your, your, your everything in your body is collected on your heart then speak to allah you are now in his presence then speak to him in whatever you want in a sense uh, you don't have to have memorized any uh, prescribed dua per se you can just say whatever you want because now you're speaking the language of love now you're speaking the language of gratitude now you're speaking the language that the whole universe understands. So that's very important when we talk about dua. And that's why the hadith says that dua or prayers <clears throat> is mukhul ibadah or uh, 
even a more authentic one, a dua huwa al ibadah. Dua is act an act of worship, or a dua is the worship, or worship is dua prayers. And why does the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us this? Uh, tell us this. He tells us he tells us this because uh, when you collect yourself in dua unto Allah's presence, well, that's the objective of 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 prayers that's the objective of fasting that's the objective of giving charity that's the objective of pilgrimage that's the whole thing so you're there and that's why it's important i know it takes practice but please let's practice that and the second thing i want to say in ramadan very quickly here is also rushing or uh, uh, occupying ourselves with istighfar and tawbah Right? Ya ayu alladhina amanu tubu ila Allah. So, uh, uh, seeking forgiveness and uh, seeking tawbah. And tawbah, mean, tawbah in English means repentance. But what it means in Arabic from taba, aba, it means to return back to Allah. As if you're saying, Ya Allah, I not only seek your forgiveness for being negligent and for being sinful and for being, for deviant, for doing less than the best, to say the least. But I am also seeking your help to bring me back to your path so that you see me where you love to see me and you miss me where you do not want to see or you do not like to see, to see me. And Tawbah, I want to return to you. I have been heedless of you, but present with other things, uh, creation. I want to return to you and be present with you. That's the whole point of Tawbah. And that's why you say, إِهْدِينَ الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ In the Fatiha, you say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ I want your help so I return back to you. So that's important as well. And also remember that Ramadan is a limited opportunity. It's not just open all the time. And already we're, you know, so many days have passed. Allah calls it as such. Limited opportunity. Ayyam ma'dudat, right? Ayyam ma'dudat, limited number days. It comes and it leaves quickly. And therefore, bring that understanding that, yeah, all right, I might be praying extra at night or doing extra, but this is only a few days. It, the days will go and the difficulty will go and the reward, the reward will always stay. And the a spirituality that I've gained will stay and the elevation and the illumination that I've gained will stay. So with that, inshallah, the last thing I'll say and I'll finish is Ramadan is a month of purity and therefore we need to clean our hearts. Go clean in Ramadan, clean your heart, dump everything that's there that's, that's, that's negative envy, greed, jealousy, hate, grudges, whatever, all that business. Don't turn your heart into a garbage can for all the negative stuff that, 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 that needs to be thrown away. Just flush them out in Ramadan and just stay with him. And, and with the creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can take that, you can take that strength and that positivity. But if you keep that negative stuff, it will only generate negativity in you. So may Allah Ta'ala bless your Ramadan and may your Ramadan be accepted and may your Ramadan be blessed and beautiful. Wassalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. thank you so much. That was so beautiful. Some key takeaways that you mentioned include uh, speak to God in dua with your heart and make sure that the heart is connected with the tongue and occupying ourselves with um, with uh, returning back to God and also asking for his forgiveness. And Ramadan is a limited opportunity, as well as this is a month of purity for all of us to clean our hearts of all the, um, all the, 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 the bad stuff that might be in it. Jazakallah khair for the beautiful reflection, for the great reminders. And this is something that we could all work on all the time. Jazakallah khair, inshallah, we look forward to seeing you again uh, next week. Uh, to all our audiences, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate you. I hope you got a lot out of this as, as we have. And we wish that you would consider supporting the ISB at isbatlanta.org. Thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again on our YouTube channel. Thank you.